Jim, I'm not right. naive. I, I understand $100 handshakes. I understand hostesses on campuses. I'm not naive. Um, I mean, you were a high school star, and I'm sure programs went out of their way to make you feel uh, beloved. But I don't know, 25 sex parties, four years, Patino had no idea. It seems to me, Jim, that's a real stretch for me. Is it for you? Well, here's the stretch, and because we don't know. But here's the thing, Connor, you, you, you know this. In college sports, the basketball and football coaches pretty much like the CEO. Yeah, They know everything that goes on. I don't care what it is. When something happens in regards to uh, disciplinary – my alarm is going off. It's okay, bud. It's okay. Just, are you safe there? The alarm's going off. Are you safe? No, I'm safe. Trust me. I got the gas coming on. I just moved to L.A. So the gas. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been, I haven't been able to, like, uh, uh, pour hot water or, or clean some clothes. But see, listen, but, but you, you, have to, you have to know. I don't care what it is. Even if you want to have the hands off, I don't want to know. But if something goes on on camp with your play, I don't care what it is. You're going to know. If somebody gets pulled over, it's a fight. I don't care what it is. So to say that you don't know is not an excuse because if something happens, the coach is ultimately responsible. Even if he delegates some authority to an assistant coach and they you know, demonstrate that they can handle it and something happens, it's going to filter back to the head coach. Well, yeah, I'm a head coach. I'm making millions of dollars. There's it, this is how it feels to me, Jim, and I'm sure you've done side. You have businesses beyond basketball. If I'm running the company, the idea that an assistant coach would go rogue and do this, I would be furious. When you were in college, take me back to your college career. Was, was your coach a, uh, a control freak, or did he let people have space? No, he, he was a control freak, being that Randy Ayers was 33 years old. It was his first college job. When it, of the first African American, young African American besides George Raveling at the time at Iowa, as far as a head coach, okay, George was there before, so he had to do everything by the book because this was his first stint. So yeah, he delegated certain things to the assistant coaches, but he had his finger thumbprint on the pulse of everything. I mean, one time, Colin, we were out and something happened at a club. We were innocent bystanders. Guess what? We got a call the next day. Why were we out? Okay, he knew immediately what happened. Okay, so that's why. And, and again, I can't point because I don't know about Rick and what's going on. But I know this: I played, I've been in the locker room, I understand coaches. You find out and know everything. Uh, now, now I'm, I will say this though, Colin: there are some times that when things go on, let's say like a handler or somebody, a player meet that the coach has no, no knowledge about. That's something he can't control. But when it's a part of your staff, that's a different story. 